Hello, welcome to AC Circuit Analysis. Here's going to be our final Thevenin equivalent problem. Um, it's an interesting problem. It's, it's a, I'm going to solve it in a way that many of you may not solve it. It's, it's not uh, super complicated. It's just not probably the first thing you would think about. But here we have a voltage source. We have a uh, voltage controlled voltage source. And we have resistors most everywhere except we have that single capacitor. Now it's a, it's a unique arrangement though because we have kind of a mesh here, we have kind of a middle mesh here, and then we have what we have going on here. And we want to find the Thevenin equivalent between A and B. So the first thing we want to do is figure out what is the open circuit voltage here between A and B, which will be our Thevenin, uh, a Thevenin voltage. Uh, and so in order to do that, there's a million ways to proceed. So if, if I were looking at this for the first time, or if you're looking at it for the first time, probably I would start labeling some currents different places, labeling some voltages, write some node uh, Kirchhoff current law uh, equations, maybe some loop equations, eventually find a series of equations that involve uh, this voltage here that I'm, you, know, you could just label there. In fact, we'll just label it now. What we're basically seeking is V feminine. And see if we can figure out what this voltage drop is here by solving a system of equations like that. And, and Ultimately, that's exactly right. But, you know, even if you don't solve it this way, it's nice to use, for you to see different ways of thinking about problems. Maybe you'll see another problem on a test that you can make, an make something a little bit simpler. So what I see right away is I have a voltage source in series with a resistance, okay? So if I detach the rest of the circuit, take all of it away, and just kind of cut it right here, I know that I can take any arrangement like this and I can write it as a current source in parallel with 12 ohms, right? And you might say, well, why would I want to do that? Why does that make it any better? The only reason it makes it really any better is because I have another resistor in parallel with it um, that if this 12 ohm is in parallel, then I could combine them together, maybe simplify that a little bit further, a little bit more than it already is. And there's a, actually a further simplification we'll take once I get the, the circuit redrawn a couple of times to show you. If I start explaining it now, then it gets a little complicated. The bottom line is anytime you have an opportunity to do a source transformation like that, I'm not always telling you to do it. I'm just saying entertain the idea for a second. It might make it simple. It's a very simple calculation to do. And once you transform the circuit, it, you still have the same tools to work with. You, you still have the equivalent circuit that you can either work with or just trash it if you don't like it. But the bottom line is that I want to try to transform, source transform this and see if it becomes any clearer. So the new source, I sub s, is going to be V over Z, where V is its voltage, 120 at an angle of zero degrees, over 12. So you see the numbers are nice too for that. And so what you get is 10 at an angle of zero degrees, and this is amps. All right? So ultimately, and I hate redrawing the circuit a million and one times, but basically what you're going to have is you're going to have this guy. I'm just going to do a shorthand way of writing it. And then you're going to have 12 ohms, like this. And then in parallel with that, you have the 60 ohms. And then up above here, you have a capacitor. So I'll kind of try to squeeze that in up here. And then you have a resistance here. And then you have this diamond right down here, like this. And then this is terminal A, and this is terminal B. So here you have. Uh, the rest of the circuit doesn't matter, matter too much because I'm going to end up redrawing it a couple of times. Anyway. This is 120, and this is negative J, 40 ohms. But for completeness, this is the whole circuit again. So then you look at and say, well, this looks more complicated. And then you realize, actually, one more thing I want to write down here. This VX, this control voltage, is the voltage across this resistance. So keep that in mind. Now, now that these are in parallel, I can, 